Hello, good afternoon everyone. Thank you very much for coming out to hear my session today. My name is Emma Ramsey and I am the Marketing Manager at Equator. For anyone who doesn't know who we are, we are one of the top 15 agencies in the UK, full service online, which means we've been helping our clients with everything online related for about the past 11 years, since about 1990. Today we'll be talking about social media measuring the ROI, something we've been helping our clients do in terms of the social media campaigns for the past three years. Today, hopefully, you'll be taking away some highlights from the challenges related to measuring social ROI. I might as well set the scene just now. They do exist. I have no magic formula. There are some challenges, but we'll talk them through today. Areas for consideration before you should be engaging in social media, or maybe if you already are, things that you should nice take a bit of a step back, consider before you make some decisions about how you're going to approach your social media, which can help strengthen your ROI in the long, the long run. Where, when, and how does social media contribute to your ROI, if it does? And some social media activities that ROI can be measured quite easily, I'm sure you'll be glad to hear. Anyone who's ever worked in offline marketing will probably know about the challenges that exist in measuring and quantifying your results. We know that television works. We know a lot of offline marketing works. We're just not entirely sure how, and I think that's a common challenge that is faced. Working in digital, it's fantastically tangible. It is so clear what you're getting, where you're getting it, and when you're getting it. Clients work with us. They say, we've got X amount to spend. We go away, apply your strategy, do our research, come back with results, say, look, you know that generated Y, and this is how it happened, right down to the very penny. Social media sits somewhere in the middle. Social media is an online challenge, a big part of an online challenge. challenge. Oh, excuse me, I left my tongue back at the office. An online channel. But it's something that many people find it quite difficult to quantify the results from that. And Equator is a big agency based on numbers, and that left us head scratching no end, please believe me, because we like to know the numbers. And I'm going to talk through today what we did for ourselves in terms of our approach to social media and also for our clients to help them understand the results of their activity. Having said that, what I should say before I go on, I should caveat my ROI thoughts, is that personally I don't believe social media is about driving direct, directly driving sales. It's not what it's about. I'm not saying it can't help. I do believe that it can because ultimately we do want to be making more money. We want to be getting people to our sites, getting them to convert, getting them to book, buy, whatever it is your business is about. But social media should be about engaging with your clients, building rela relationships, building awareness, and getting them to think really great things about you. Because all of that can contribute, about your, contribute to your ROI. On the other hand, I think social media now is a big grown-up channel, a big channel in its own right. I think historically it's been a bit of the poor cousin because everybody thinks it's quite easy to do. They're not too sure what they're going to get from it. They just think, you know, we'll just tack on a little bit of social media. We'll do a wee bit of social media. We should. But it's a big channel now. And it's a lot, it takes a lot of investment, a lot of effort, so it's only fair that you want to know what you're getting from it. And that being the case, it's easy to look at why everybody wants to do social, and everybody does. The growth that it's experienced has been phenomenal, and it's just, just going to get bigger. I should caveat as well that I'm not suggesting that Facebook is social media. That's not all it's about. I'm just using it for an example here. But before you go plunging into social media, or if you're already doing it already and not entirely sure what you're getting out, there are a few things you should think about and consider before you go any further. Social media isn't free. It's not a free channel. It's very easy and quick. Just throw up a Facebook page. Again, just an example. It doesn't cost anything, but that's not managing a campaign. Social media takes time, a lot of time. It needs to be closely monitored and on quite a regular, if not daily, if not at hours basis. This takes a lot of time to do. You also need people to do it. Smiley happy people, apparently, to do social media for you. And I think historically that was whoever had a bit of spare capacity in the office, they could just manage the social media for us. And it was about finding the right person. Then again, again it was then it moved to the role of the graduate or the student because they were the right demographic for social. They were young, so they must know about social media. That has evolved so much. It's now about having the right people to do it for you, and that means strategists, analysis, people who know about PR, people who are involved in your customer services channel, people who are really good at writing content. That takes a lot. It takes a lot of time on their part, and obviously there's an investment there because you have to pay them to do it. Then <laughs> this really, really kind of ugly computer that I think I might have actually stolen off the set of Lost um, <laughs> is to represent technology. You need technology. We're talking about measuring ROI today. You can't possibly 
measure your return if you don't know what's happening, what's the outcome of your activity. In terms of investment here, that could be a cost in terms of actually buying an analytics package. Some are free, some of the good ones are actually quite free. But again, it's not just about money, it's about the time that it takes you to pull all your reports, analyse your results, what worked, what didn't and why. This means it's quite a significant cost to your business. Something else that I think is a good question is, is it for you? I believe social media is for everyone, almost everyone. It's about how it works for your business. One size take the point that Nick made in the last presentation, one size does not fit all and that is totally true of social media. Do you have an audience? Do you have an audience that are using social media? I think a lot of people just jump in and they don't really know. Is there anybody out there? Are they listening? And if they are, do they care what you're telling them? So if you know that they're using social media, great. What are they using it for? These are things that, if you know, will help strengthen your ROI. Are they using it to read about customer reviews? Are they doing it for research? Are they using it to engage with the customer services department? That's all good stuff. If, like Nick, they're maybe just using it to post photographs of themselves on holiday, they're not really interested. That is not your right real, your, your perfect audience. I'm sorry, Nick, I had to go there. I'm sorry. I had to take advantage of it. So it's about knowing that they're there, knowing it, that they're using it in a way that's relevant to you, which is good. Which media platforms are they on? Social media platforms are they on? For example, if you're on Twitter and they're all on Facebook, there's disconnect there. Just because they're using social media, there's a variety of platforms available now. You have to be in the place where your audience is. And you can take that even further. If you know that you have an audience, that they do use social media, that they're using it for reasons you'd like to get involved in, that they're on platforms and you know where they are, take that further. Again, don't assume that all of your audience are in the same place. Again, to touch on Nick's point, he said there's different voices for different audiences. I totally agree. If your product or your service is aimed at men and women, are they using it for the same reasons in the same ways? If your products and services are aimed at a different age group, again, these different ages, 25 to 35 or whatever, may be using it at different times and for different reasons. Such an obvious point, but what do you want to get out of it? And so many people don't give it any consideration. And my personal favourite to date has been, why are you doing social media? Well, because everybody else is. It takes you back to my mum telling me off when I was a kid for doing something stupid and the, would you jump in the Clyde Emma if everybody else went? Well, of course I wouldn't. So it's the same for social media. It's knowing what you want to get out of it. My opinion, there's two outcomes here. There's financial, whether it's a sale, a booking, more revenue, whatever it is. It's basically either a new customer, someone who's never bought from you before, or someone who's bought from you in the past and getting them to buy again. Social media, generally, there is exceptions, doesn't create this, doesn't make this happen. Social media is here, non-financial outcomes, which is one of the reasons that it's a challenge to contribute an ROI. Social interactions can be anything from getting a Facebook fan, a retweet, um, someone, a customer interaction. That could even be a customer complaint. But it's not better to know than not know and use the opportunity to take that negative and turn it into something positive. Sentiment, something that I'm going to talk about a wee bit because I find this quite fascinating. And even if you're not into social media, I think this is something that a lot of companies should do, a bit of online listening. Are people saying nice things about you? Are they saying bad things about you? Do you even know? Are they saying anything about you? Which that even be worse if they're not even aware of your brand. And finally, visits. Visits to your site. Might not be a converting visit at that stage, but if they're still coming to your site, it's all a good thing. These are things, some of the things that you want to be measuring and looking at. Again, a really obvious point, but it's surprising how many people just don't do it. We're talking about ROI. We're talking about measuring the results of your investment. How can you do that if you don't know where you started? Once you've decided that you have an audience, that you want to engage with them via social media, and you know what you want to be measuring, where are you just now? Look at those metrics and take a view. Are you in a good place? Are you in a bad place? Are you nowhere? You need to see where you can, you, have, you need to know where you start before you can decide, or big part, where you can ascertain where you get to. And at what point does social media contribute to ROI? The big question. It's helpful at this stage to look at the traditional ROI model and compare that to how I believe the social media ROI model looks. Traditional ROI model is, we decide, for example, to invest 
£5,000 and PPC campaign in October. The action is the PPC campaign goes live. The reaction is people start to click. The financial impact some device. Exactly, it's very, very simple. For example, £5,000 investment gets 50,000 clicks at a 3% conversion rate. Sorry, I have to check the number because I don't know off the top of my head. That's 1,500 sales at a £60 AOV, generates £90,000 in revenue. Simple ROI, ROI of 18 to 1. I'm sorry, Excel killed my mathematical skills. Can't count in my head. Um, so it's really, really simple, very, very clear and easy to do. Social media ROI model differs. Likewise, we decide to invest £5,000 in a Twitter account for October. Page goes live here. The reaction is that people start to engage, engage with us on Twitter. The non-financial impact to be somewhere along the lines of we get 500 fans, just picking a number. We see a 10% increase in online conversation, great. And maybe a 13% increase in positive sentiment, even better. However, these are st this is still at this point. Nothing, investment ROI or true financial ROI is happening between here and here. Social ROI or big brand social outcomes only come at this stage. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're getting an increase in positive mentions and that's obviously decreasing the, neg the proportion of negative mentions, that's a good thing. People are much more likely to buy from you if they like you, if they have good feelings about you. But again, we still can't contribute a financial ROI at this point. And that's what we'll be looking at further down in the presentation. Having said that, however, I think there are a couple of things to remember here, and I think that's why when I was researching, pulling together how we're going to measure our social ROI, I had to kind of open my mind a little bit and kind of take off my big numbers hat for a little second and forget about the traditional model because it doesn't apply and it doesn't work. For example, I'm going to take PPC again. See, at this point, when people are clicking, they already want to buy. They have identified that they have a need for your product and services. They're further down the buying channel, the buying purchase funnel, beg your pardon. Not necessarily the same with social media. If you can imagine there were buttons over here, social media is about creating awareness for your brand and creating good feeling about it. This can even be before the people you're targeting are even aware of their needs. They might not know that they want to buy your product and service, whereas in the PPC channel, at this point, they do. They're buying because they want it. The idea in social media is to create such good awareness and such good feeling, turning that like into a love, if you like, that when they get to a point where they want to buy something that your company provides, they think about your brand and are warm already towards it. The other thing I think is quite interesting is that, again, we'll use PPC. The buying process is quite short. A couple of days, we'll obviously talk about cookie periods, 30 days, because that's what we find that people buy and they rebuy and that's time periods. Social media is not the same. Social media takes a longer time for the effect to come over. It won't, people will click and they'll buy straight away. They won't on social. So again, we have to open our minds up a bit to expecting a longer customer journey. Just because it's not having an instantaneous effect on your bottom line doesn't mean it's not supporting it. How do you know it's working? It's a fantastic question. Track what you do. Track all your social media activity. Doesn't matter how small it is, how big it is. Frequency is almost very, very important as well. How often are you doing it? How you, who are you doing it for? Who are you doing it to? How are you doing it? And be consistent. If you're doing something once and it works, don't assume it worked just because it was a social media campaign. It might have been a fluke. Do it again, trial it and test it and refine. Happily, there are some activities that you can measure with financial ROI really, really easily. Just for example, I've just, as an example, taken blogging, Facebook and Twitter. If you're blogging, and you have links in your blog, someone comes to your site, if you have e-commerce enabled on your site and they buy, there's an outcome, there's an ROI you can attribute straight away. Same goes with Facebook and Twitter. Anybody who follows if our friends or fans on Facebook will see that a lot of companies include our, um, URLs in their posts to make it as easy as possible for you to get to the site and buy. Same goal with Twitter. One thing I would say about Twitter, actually, if you do do this, if you do have a Twitter feed and you use it to promote your, your products and services, if you're using bit.ly URLs, make sure they're always tracked and enabled so you can track the visits that you get through. The other thing as well, there's a wealth of information about Twitter just now and improving your click-through rate from your tweets to your site. Uh, people don't always agree on it. What we tend to work to is that it is agreed and it's believed that tweets that have a URL, a bit.ly URL in there will increase their click-through rate. It's kind of common sense. You're making it easier for them to visit your site. Don't want to do it too much, however, 100% just looks spammy. You don't want that. We generally tend to find a ratio of about 80% with a URL to 20 non-URL works quite well. 
but again, it will differ from everybody. So just try it and see what ones work well. Social metrics to be watched. Can't attribute a financial ROI at this stage, but it doesn't mean they don't support. For example, for your blogs, you want to be looking at your visitor numbers. Are people, do people even know it's there? Are they coming to your blog? Do they even know it exists? Are they commenting on it? Are they finding the content engaging? Are they asking questions on the back of it? Are they is it your blog inspiring debate amongst its readers? Dwell time's an interesting one. Are they actually reading it? They may be coming, but are they spending any time? Are they reading your articles? Return visits. Did they like it so much they came back? Did they find something worthwhile that they wanted to read it again? And backlinks. Are people finding the content valuable to the point that they're actually linking to your blog? And I don't know if anybody saw Martin Jordan's presentation on SEO and how that relates to social media. But this is also an important point. Increasing the number of backlinks you get back into your blog will help you to rank naturally for it if that's something you're looking to do. Facebook, if you're doing a social media campaign, it can be expected that your friends, fans and likes numbers should go up. Same with your Twitter. The point to make here is that once you get all your information, it's not enough just to record it. For example, why did one blog visit, one blog post rather get more visits than another? Why did one get more comments than another? It's about learning from the activity and taking that because if one gets more visits that goes to your site, the chance that they're going to convert, better, or beg pardon, a better chance of converting if they don't click through at all. Same with um, your tweets. Do your tweets, some tweets get retweeted more than others? Why is that? Time of day, does it affect when you're tweeting? Are people more engaged with your Twitter account at a certain point in the evening, first thing in the morning, whatever it is? To take back to the URL point, it's also quite interesting to test and refine if you are including a URL in your tweet, what's, what works best when the URL is at the front of the tweet, at the end of the tweet, in the middle? You'll be surprised the different kind of results you can get from playing about with it and keeping an eye on the results. Monitor your mentions. This is all about online listening. What are people saying about you online? There's a really good quote that I'm sure some people have heard about that social media does not create negativity, it just uncovers it. And I think that is very, very true. I think some people are afraid of doing social media because they believe that they will look at a bit of a backlash and it will become a kind of dumping ground for negative opinion. But just because you weren't hearing about it before doesn't mean it didn't exist. It is totally better to know what people are saying about you online. By carrying out your social media and looking at your social listening, ideally, the idea is that you should be reducing the proportion of negative mentions. Anybody that wasn't loving you before should start to love you as time goes over. And because of that, the number and the volume of positive mentions should also increase. People should have nice things about you, feel nice things about you, have nice connotations about you. Turning these likes into love. These people become your brand ambassadors. They can actually save you time and money. I have known companies that do this so, so well that a potential customer might ask a question directly to the company. And before you know it, part of their social media, someone else, a user, just a consumer, has replied on their behalf. So whilst you want to get this down and you want to get this up, you also want, if there, I should have another line, but you want to have this number, almost like overall conversation, neutral mentions, if you like. You want to have the volume of people talking about you online increasing, which means that your social media is having an effect and it is talk, touching people because they are talking about you. This is when it gets a bit interesting. This is when we try to ascertain the ROI. It's all about correlation. We can attribute some of the social media with a financial ROI at this point in time, but it's finding out what works. So you take all of your data and you pull it all together and you want to be looking for patterns. What worked, when and why? So you could argue that something worked here. These two got a spike. Didn't have any effect on this channel. Why? Why did it work? Who were we touching? Why were we touching? So to speak, beg your pardon. Um, <laughs> It's funny games at Equator, I can tell you. Um, it all worked here. Why is that? Something worked there really, really well. It touched three channels at the same time or whatever the metric happens to be. Let's do it again. Should we be doing it more often? Something maybe didn't work that well here. Maybe that social campaign was the best thing that we did. Maybe we weren't doing anything. Maybe we should have been. Maybe it was a down period. You'll also be able to ascertain things that you can't really measure. For example, the red line is on an upward trend, so it's difficult to tell if social media has an effect here. Interestingly enough as well, you can see if social media is not having any effect. Nothing happened here. Maybe you need to think something else for them, whatever that happens to be. 
So is it possible? Yes, it is. Just have to be open that you can't do it the way we've traditionally measured ROI. In some cases you can, but generally not at all. That doesn't mean it's not supporting other channels. It's getting to know your customers, looking at the user journey and seeing where they interact with social media as the terms of buying your products and services. What you have to do to make it strong, know that your audience are there, know that they're listening, know that they care about you, know that they want to hear what you're saying. Set your aims at the outset, what do you want to achieve and why? Know where you are right now, so know, tell how far you've come on. Track, track, track outcomes, the ones that are easy and the hard ones, unfortunately. Correlate, compare and refine what worked, why it worked, what didn't, how can we change it, how can we make it better. And enjoy social media success and I'm sure keep your financial directors and your accountants happy because they will be happy to invest in social media going forward. Thank you. All right, so does anyone have any questions for me? Hi. Hi. You spoke a lot about measuring sentiment and... Hi. You spoke a lot about measuring sentiment and working out what worked, but in, uh -huh. in terms of, you know, what are those actions that let you know what has worked? What is it you're aiming to achieve with the things that you're measuring? If you're not talking about maybe pushing someone into a sales funnel or uh -huh. is it literally just getting people to engage with your content or pass that content on what are the actual actions yeah it's not about getting them into i think if i got your question right it's not about pushing them into the sales funnel generally but if you're looking at your sentiment and you're increasing that it's better to have for example pre-social media if you've got 400 people or 400 percent mentions if you like that think you're okay and 400 think that you're not it's better to have more okays and more goods because whilst you don't know at that point if they're actually buying for argument's sake, common sense dictates that if people like you, they're much more likely to do something with your brand and engage at a later date. Does that, make, does that answer your question? Yes, Hello. Hi there, hi. Um, in terms of e-commerce, if somebody's running a, a campaign for, I don't know, a, a seasonal collection or something, uh -huh. and the financial officer does want to know exactly how much money a Facebook campaign. Well, they're always going to ask. <laughs> I know, they're always going to ask. And this is my biggest problem, is being able... I, I appreciate social media for brand awareness and customer yep. relations. But in terms of measuring the financial return on investment, even looking at that graph where you said what works and what doesn't, yep. what analytical tools can you use or should you use yep. to measure the return on investment? Um, there's a wealth of them out just now. Um, Google is actually doing it now. I think it's still in beta. If you go, do you have analytics, Google Analytics? The, um, the new version of analytics has it in beta just now. Um, that's quite a good tool to use. There are, there's tons available. If you do have a page on Facebook, they have Facebook Insights, I think it's called. Use all that. Um, yeah, I think there are other ones you can use, but I would definitely start with Google just now. It won't always be possible. Again, especially like you said, it was a seasonal campaign. It's not as quick as that. It doesn't. That's another thing you want to be looking at. You want to be looking at your activity and then the results. It's almost like how long did that take to take effect? It's like finding something for PPC, but for social media, who's clicking on a certain link and then yep. going right through to a basket page, so to speak? But it's, I think it's not as direct as that, unfortunately. Direct. Unfortunately, I wish it was. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Hi. Hi. Um, I've recently started a fashion blog uh -huh. and I'm finding it difficult to kind of persuade retailers to yep. kind of be interested. Um, is there a way I can persuade them? Um, yes, I think there is. I think historically, retailers have believed that, talk about this power in the relationship, but they had it and that bloggers didn't. I don't think they've understood that the reach that bloggers can have. Bloggers, I don't know what your traffic is like, but do bloggers maybe not have the most number of people back around the most people coming to their site, but they have a really, really engaged audience, which is very, very powerful. Um, unfortunately, you may have to share your metrics with them just to see, to give them an idea of the kind of traffic that you're getting. Having said that, one of my colleagues, I don't think she's here today, but she runs a really successful fashion blog called Kingdom of Style, if anybody's interested in having a nosy. She was approached after some convincing, if I'm being honest, the retailer now admits that they took a bit of convincing to work with this retailer three months before their e-commerce functionality went live on their site. And what she did was she posted about them, first post three months in advance, she sent a post out about them. That generated 600 members for their newsletter. 
Another one was about a month later, she got another 400 new members for the newsletter. So it was building brand awareness and getting the message out there, obviously trying to create demand before the products were available to buy online. That also, I'm sure it resulted in some kind of collaboration with a designer called Mrs Jones, who's a London-based designer. Don't know much about it, if I'm being honest, because she has seen them on the blog. Further down the line, I think, just before it launched, um, an editor of a Prydian magazine had actually seen her as well, and that led to accounts being opened up in France. So basically, it did raise brand awareness, and they saw that there was a, a benefit from working with a blogger. And I think, most importantly, what they found was that in the first month, she went live January 2011, and in that month, 70% of her revenue was a direct result of Michelle, Kingdom of Styles, traffic. And the other thing they actually did find, which I think was actually more valuable, the post itself sparked debate offline and the customers or the people that were reading it started to discuss the price point. They actually thought it was a bit expensive, our pricing was slightly expensive. And on the back of that, the retailer took that on board, gave them a great insight into the, the user's perception, the value of the brand, and they reduced their prices. So a kind of very cheap market research, if you like. Is that helpful? Good. Anyone else? Hi. I'll wait till the mic comes down to you. Hi there. Um, do you have an example of a social media campaign that's had a positive effect on ROI? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, online case studies abound, particularly, uh, as you'll imagine, for the big campaigns that have big budgets. But my favourite to date, and I'm pretty sure everybody's aware of it, is the Old Spice campaign. I think it's just finished. You know, look at me, look at your man, look at me, look at your man. I'm on a white horse. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I know I'm really quite sad that it's finished. I don't actually get tired of watching it, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, really, really good campaign. Um, originally viral that went, the social response campaign. You know, they did the videos on the back of customers engaging with their Twitter. I saw one where Mustafa, the guy's name is, I know too much about this, um, actually proposed to someone, well, the girl or the guy for the girl on Facebook, Twitter, I think it was. Um, they were able to demonstrate really high ROI. They had, I think, about 27% increase year on year on sales. They got traffic to their website up for about 300%. And this is a non-transactional website. You can't even buy on this site, but people were going. They also were able to demonstrate that... What was the other one they got? Yeah. On the back of it, Google Trends reported that traffic or searches for Old Spice was up by about a thousand percent, which is just absolutely crazy. So awareness of the brand went through the roof, and now it's number one body wash for men in America. I'm guessing, but yeah, it can be done. And if you're interested in finding out who does it and who does it well, case studies are everywhere. Have a nosy about them, and you will get something back from them. One that I actually did miss out on that is Dell as well. Dell do it very well. Dell had no idea what they were getting from their Twitter. And the first 12 months that they measured, they realised that they made about a million dollars in the first 12 months. Now, to be fair, I mean, a million dollars is a drop in the ocean, I'm sure, for Dell. But um, it gave them an indication of what they were getting. They didn't know what they were getting before, so at least they had an indication at that point. And they took it a bit further, and they actually do it quite cleverly. Again, to touch on Nick's point, they had one account, and they now split that up. And I think they've got six different accounts on Twitter. And again, it's targeting separate people or different people for different reasons. And they've taken it a lot further, and they make a lot of money out of it. Anyone else? Yes. It was just a comment on uh -huh. your fashion blog. Um, yes. It's not mine. It's not mine. It's not mine. <laughs> it's but, else. but when you finish, when they lowered the price, the reason why they, they did that was to increase their volume. Yep. Which basically increased their return on investment. Yep. So it worked really well. Yeah. Um, I think that goes to show that the intelligence that you get off social. Absolutely. Off this, you know, the social media. Is, is absolutely it's perfect crazy. for yep. tweaking your own marketing. Yep. So they had to tweak one of the, their P's, which was their yep. price, increase the volume, got yep. an increase in ROI, just like that. Yep. So that was absolutely. a good example. Yeah, and just to make it again, to pull back to the Old Spice campaign, I would expect them to take some of that data that they found and reshape their offering. And they actually have, they've got a new product coming out and it looks quite different. Um, so definitely, you can. And again, it's a great way of just finding out what people want, what they don't want. Is something your competitors are doing that you don't? Are you missing a trick? And it's a great way of finding that out. And it also shows that you care. I think if you're in that space and you're reacting to that, and that's also a nice thing for your brand sentiment. Okay, somebody at the back. Hiya. Hi. Hi. Um, just when you're launching a, a social media campaign, how much emphasis do you put with your clients on their own website? 
Because obviously when you're driving traffic back there, that has a big influence on whether or not they actually convert. Do you put an emphasis on that or do you help them with that? Um, we do help with them with that. Um, if it's a client we're already working with, their websites are already in a fantastic shape because we're doing such a good job <laughs> at that point. Um, yes, if you're ultimately, you want to make sure you keep a balance about how much your social media activity happens off-site and then you make sure you, some of it's happening on, especially for your transactional Ultimately, you have to get them back to your site. I think some companies maybe take that a bit too far and they do too much of it off-site. I think they lose sight of the point of it. But again, it's finding out where they are in the social media space and then using that to help encourage their journey back to being uh, not conversational, transactional. Do you offer any guidance on the actual technical structure of the website, etc., then from that point of view, so that you know, when they are going back to a converting page, that they are going to convert from that page, that the page isn't giving them, you yep. know, misleading communications or whatever. Yep. I can't do that, but we can. Equator can do that. Yeah, don't ask me any techie questions, please. <laughs> yeah, we're really, really embarrassed when we can't answer them. Over there. Hello. Hi, thank you very much for sharing the Not examples. Um, do you, can you give us an example of of uh, an equator, obviously no <laughs> confidential information, but um, yep. a, an example that Equator's worked on and how that's worked and how you measured it. Yep, we actually do have one, a client who is financial services. Um, what we found with them is that, <laughs> not naming names, but financial services are really seen as kind of faceless organisations, quite cold, quite money grabbing, if I'm being honest. Uh, we have worked with them, not them personally, but the perception of that market. And working with them, we have improved their perception or people's perception of them. And that's quite strong for them because, again, they are now standing out a little bit as opposed to others that are not doing much about it. I'm just happy to be cold. How did you measure that? That was brand sentiment. I think Nick also stole my thunder a little bit and <laughs> mentioned a tool called Brandwatch. There's others that exist, but that's one that we use. And that, mentions, that monitors your mentions over time. If it's a positive one, it's a negative one, it's a neutral one. What was the mention about? What are they talking about? Um, that's a good tool to use. It's one that we like to use. And how does that compare to likes of social mention? It's the same thing. Right. Sorry, I'm using a bit of terminology, but it's the same thing. Okay. Anyone else? Not in the back. Hi Hello. there. Um, I just wondered, often the biggest problem it was alluded to during the presentation is... Sorry, I can't, hear, I can't hear you very well. Sorry, can you hear me better yeah. now? Yep. The, the biggest problem is often applying a number to your activities. Um, do you have any roundabout ways, even if it's not 100% accurate? I'm really sorry, could you repeat that question? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Do you have any roundabout ways of uh -huh. applying a number to the return on investment from social media, even if you can't 100% yep. directly attribute revenue to that? Yep. Um, what you can do is you can take the ROI numbers that you can do, you we're talking about the Facebook and the Twitter and the blogging, for example, and then look at proportionately if you're getting so much more traffic, but it's maybe not converting at that time. This will not be an exact science in any way, shape or form, but to give you an idea. The other thing I would say is tracking your information is look for the patterns. If there's a big push in activity, but then three months down the line, for example, there's a big push in sales, it could be you need to correlate. That would give you an indication. But unfortunately, just now, it doesn't exist. That's not to say that it won't in future. And I think given the way that social media is going, somebody will develop some way of doing it and become very rich and retire to the Bahamas or whatever they'll do. Um, but unfortunately, not just now. But a good place to start is to look at the areas that you can measure, then look at proportionally how that much is that attributed to say it potentially could be doing so much more. Hello. Hiya. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to ask, you, you mentioned at the beginning that there were sort of challenges yep. around measuring ROI and social yep. media. Do you think that we're going to get better at it as time goes on? Do you think there are things that you can see happening that will, yeah, will allow I think we us have to measure to. better? I think we have to get better at it. I think as people get smarter at doing it, they'll be able to see the effects of doing it. I think as people start to understand that it's not free, I think a lot of people still think it is. I don't think people actually realise there's quite a significant investment there. I think we will have to get smarter at it. I think there'll be more analytics tools that will come about that are enabled to track reactivity. So if you could measure anything that you can't measure now, mm -hmm. what would it be? <sighs> You're on the spot. Sorry, that's all right. I didn't mean to give you a really it's hard question. All right, it's all right, all right. If I can measure anything that I can't measure just now, it would be the value of 
non-transactional interactions. We don't know what that's worth. It's worth a lot, actually. We do. We know it's worth something. We just can't put a number on it, which is a challenge for everybody. It would be the, the interactions. How valuable is that? It's like brands. Everybody knows that brands are valuable, but it's hard to tell why. And you've heard, I'm sure everybody's read case studies and heard about brands that get really bad PR and the numbers just fell through the floor, so there's a value there. Just not entirely sure what it is. And I think when I think about social media, I always try and liken it to online media. We can drive direct sales from somebody clicking a banner and going through to transact, but we also talk about media and having this halo effect. We know that it supports the other channels. We're just not entirely sure where or when and how. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Hi. Hi. Um, what's your kind of key advice around joining everything up? So obviously social media has a place across all media and channels. So, yep. you know, TV, outdoor, so you've got a QR code up there. How yep. are you guys looking at that? Um, well, obviously it depends what other activity you're doing. Um, it's working out, for us, it's working out how that interacts with the other channels. Does it drive the other channels? Does it support, like the media, qu the media point, does it support the other channels? And it's working out how and if it does. Is that kind of, it's very, I think there's no one size fits all. Unfortunately, we, I think as well with social media, with every client, with every channel that we work on, actually, you have to approach it with a fresh pair of eyes. See if it's going to work for them, because not, one's not necessarily, I mean, if one's successful in one client, doesn't necessarily mean it'll be successful in another. Do you have an opinion on that, actually, just out of interest? Do you do it, or? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously they, they can all be in, intrinsic to each other, and it can all come together. Yeah. Um, and I think Consumers certainly are getting way more used to seeing, Absolutely. you know, even ev pretty much every TV show at the moment is trying to drive people onto Twitter to have a chat yep. about opinions. So I guess it's, you know, it's then taking that chat and harnessing it yeah. and, and making improvements to what you're doing. No, it's a really interesting point because I think for the first time ever, t television in that respect is becoming direct response. People are seeing something on TV and doing something on the back of that and it's engaging with social media. Thank you. Not at all. Yes. I think that's a way forward. It's an influencing tool. So yeah. effectively, while you're running a campaign, I'm not saying you would run it at the same time. It might be prior or might be during or might be after yep. you run your social media campaign. And if that heightens brand awareness or, or the warm fuzzy feel towards your product, yep. it can only increase the, the top end and the, bo and the bottom line. Yeah, and I think that's the point to remember. Even though you can't measure it directly, I mean, it's a good thing. It has to be a good thing. Okay. It amplifies yep. uh, the message. Absolutely. Uh, and the brand. Yeah. Yep. Anyone else? Hi. Oh, sorry, two people at one time. Uh, just on the back of that, so is it best, do you think, if you're, um, say, advertising on television to have the same message advertised through oh, social we're going media? Offline. <laughs> um, or there has to be some kind of consistency, I think, in the messaging. Otherwise, it just all gets a bit confused. But again, it depends what you're trying to achieve with it and what your product service is and who you're trying to aim it at. So it really, really depends on the market and your audience and your products. But generally, I would believe, yeah, some consistency in the messaging is important. Yes? Hi. This is probably more of a comment than a question. Okay. But I think that in some ways, social media is a bit more like traditional TV advertising okay. than the way we're used to thinking about things in digital yeah. in the sense that it is less direct return on investment. Yep. You can't measure, not always you can't, but it is harder to measure a direct yep. impact, a direct click yep. through to purchase. Yep. And that in a way we've kind of been lucky over the last 10 years that we start to measure return on investment in that way and social media is much more like traditional TV yeah. advertising. You know some of it works, you know 50% of it works, yep. but you don't know which 50% in a way. Absolutely, but I would still make the point it's still so much more quantifiable than television is. So it's kind of halfway in between the two. 